Loretta Lynch's alias revealed the former attorney general using the name Elizabeth Carlisle for some of her official Justice Department emails, including emails surrounding her tarmac meeting with former President Bill Clinton. This, according to the American Center for Law and Justice, here now to react, Jordan Sekulow. He is American Center for Law and Justice Executive Director. Well, congratulations. for It's like finding a needle in a haystack. You were going through hundreds of yeah. pages. Uh, and then you came up with this, this email, Elizabeth Carlisle, thanks to all who worked on this. She's talking about dealing with the press and uh, her meeting with Bill Clinton. And then she signs it AG. So apparently the inner circle at the Justice Department knew that she was using this alias. That's right. And so this is the first time, uh, David, that through uh, FOIA requests and documents that we figured out uh, from a number of groups who file these FOIAs, uh, we figured out exactly what the uh, uh, alias email account was for Loretta Lynch. She had it acknowledged through an attorney previously that she had an alias email account, but no one knew what it was. And I say that because you know, if you go back now through past FOIAs even, you may be able to find instances where now you know the AG was on emails right. that you would not have known before. No, you, you found you, you this really out broke because it. she actually replied. What you did, Jordan, was break the code. <laughs> now that you've broken the code, yeah, right. uh, all kinds of other FOIA requests, right. freedom of information requests, will be able to discover her emails. Now, she claims, and I'm, we can put up her, her statement, she she claims that all other attorney or at least a lot of other attorney generals have done the same thing. Former Attorney General Lynch did not use her given name in the handling of her government email address. Her address was known to individuals who processed FOIA requests. Well, did you know that she was using aliens? No, and, and I, I really, uh, again, the idea that it was known to individuals processing the FOIA request may have been so that they could actually redact a lot of that information I from see. her. I mean, I, I don't think it was to expose it to the uh, people filing uh, the FOIA information. Now, Jordan, aren't there rules uh, about putting official information on, on personal email or alias accounts? I know she, she claims she used the, the government server, but still she's using right. an alias. Yeah, I mean, what the rules would be is when you're filing to make sure, and that's why we have to go back, and when people filed requests for information uh, related to the attorney general, that they were actually getting the responses now that we know the alias existed. I don't know that it's illegal for the alias to exist. I don't think that there's a problem there as long as you're actually on the server, like you said, so long as you're not hiding information that right. should be available to the public well, with that alias. Talk and, about and hiding we information. That is part of it. We know that IRS, former IRS official Lois right. Lerner, the one who was going after the Tea Party, uh, that she also used an alias, and we've just discovered what that was. Uh, might we now go back and reopen her case, or at least you in the private sector do that? We're still involved. We're in depositions with that case. We represented, uh, David, all those uh, groups that were uh, still waiting. They've all gotten their status now from the IRS, thankfully, but we're still doing depositions. Yeah. We're still in federal court uh, with Lois Lerner and, uh, and the IRS on that Jordan, matter. Jordan, they're giving me a wrap, but I just have to point out one other thing that was in that long list, those hundred pages. There's this letter from a New York Times reporter named Mark Landler, and he says, hi, Melanie, and the Melanie he's referring yeah. to as a press officer at DOJ, Melanie Newman. I'm a wet White House correspondent at the New York Times, and I've been pressed into service to write about yeah. the Questions being raised about Attorney General. So it's almost like he's apologizing to have to cover this. And he actually went back later, David, through emails and was providing the text to the Department of Justice before it was published so that they could comment and edit it. I mean, so you've actually got that in these emails as Amazing. well. And I will tell people, as we uh, discussed before going on the air, yeah. uh, we just discovered the White House involvement, that the talking points that were redacted in this were actually forwarded along to a, a White House assistant press secretary. Very so White important. House connection, too. So it does go directly to the White House, and there were questions about that. Jordan Seclo, congratulations. Uh, amazing discovery. Appreciate you coming on.